Hi everyone, Yasa Askekala Sirfata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make three delicious Mediterranean dishes that are ready in under an hour. They're perfect for busy weeknights. The whole family is going to love these. Let's get started. Okay, so we're starting with the Mediterranean flounder, baked flounder, and you're going to need one onion. Just go ahead and cut it in half and then thinly slice it. And then add about a quarter cup of olive oil to the onions in the pan and a little pinch of salt and cook them over medium heat until they're nice and soft and golden. That's going to take eight to 10 minutes. Next, once the onions are ready, go ahead and add four to five garlic cloves or cloves of garlic that have been grated and then just warm them through until they're fragrant. That just takes a few seconds and then take the pan off of the heat. Since this recipe is meant to be quick and easy, I'm not going to cook down the sauce. Um, if you had an extra 10-15 minutes, it's best to cook the onions in like a saucepan or a little pot that can hold uh, the tomato sauce that's going to go in here next. And then you would just cook it over medium heat for about 8 or 9 minutes until the sauce thickens. But we're doing this quick and easy weeknight dinner style. So I'm adding one jar of pasta sauce. Um, if you want to make your own sauce, like I said, if you have time, I've done a recipe for um, fish plecky, which is a Greek, basically this recipe, using cod. And uh, the, the, the measurements for homemade sauce are on there. It's pretty easy to make. But if you have a jar of pasta sauce laying around, take the help from the store. And I like to add a little bit of mild harissa to this for a little kick of heat, some spice and lots of flavor. And this is a sauce that's made of roasted red peppers and chilies and warm spices. It just adds so much flavor to sauce. And then before we add the fish to this, I have some kalamata olives here. I'm just gonna roughly chop them. You could use your favorite olives. If you don't like olives, you can totally leave them out. And instead of olives, capers are really nice in this. Go ahead and taste the sauce and see if it needs any more seasoning. The salt to me is perfect. I'm gonna add a little sprinkle of dried Greek oregano, half to one teaspoon, whatever you like. If you don't like oregano, you could use thyme instead. So I have two pounds of flounder fillets that have been previously frozen. I just thawed them out and I patted them dry with some paper towels. I'm just gonna season both sides with a little bit of salt and some black pepper. You can use codfish if you like. You can use sole fillets. You could even make this with salmon, but the flounder fillets are nice and mild. They're tender and they bake very quickly. Just go ahead and transfer the fillets right on top of the sauce. And these are going to bake at 425 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. So once the fish comes out of the oven, you can go ahead and chop up some parsley and just sprinkle it on top and it is ready to be served. You could serve this over pasta, rice, toasted bread, cauliflower rice, or a nice salad. It is totally up to you, but it is delicious and it's time for the taste test. Mm. The fish melts in your mouth. The thing I love about flounder is even if you cook it, if you, even if you overcook it a little bit, it's still nice and soft. Whereas a fish like cod, if you overcook it, it does tend to be a little bit rubbery. This is very forgiving and is the perfect thing to put together, um, especially when you're in a hurry or if you want to impress guests with a nice dinner. This is it. It's delicious. The sauce is, is slightly sweet. The onions also, they, they cook down and they're nice and sweet. The olives give it a little, a little kick of savoriness and brininess. The whole thing is delicious. 
I hope you guys give this one a try. Now we're gonna move on to the second recipe. We're gonna make creamy pesto tortellini. I get a lot of help from the supermarket with this one and I buy store-bought tortellini that's already shaped and filled and all of that stuff. You can use ravioli instead and if you don't have either of those two, you can just use plain pasta. I just love these filled pastas because they have creamy cheese inside and it adds a little bit more heartiness to the meal. So you're gonna start off by bringing a big pot of water to a boil, add a little bit of salt to it, about a teaspoon or so, then go ahead and add the tortellini and cook it according to your package's instructions. Mine says to cook it for two minutes, so I cook it for two minutes. Then I carefully lift it out of the hot water or you can drain it. If you're passing it through a strainer, make sure that you reserve about two cups of that pasta liquid. It's gonna help when you're reheating the pasta or to thin out the sauce a little bit without having to add a whole bunch of cream. Anyway, strain the pasta and transfer it to a bowl. And then in a skillet, you can go ahead and add five or six scallions that have been thinly sliced with about three to four tablespoons of olive oil. Cook them until they're nice and soft, about two to three minutes. Then you can go ahead and add a cup of frozen green peas. If you don't like green peas, you can leave them out. You can add about seven, eight ounces or half a pound of spinach leaves. That would be good too. Cook, warm them through until they're nice and warm, about five, six minutes. And then you can go ahead and add pesto. I usually make lots of pesto. It keeps fresh in the refrigerator for weeks actually. And I do have a recipe on it, which I'll post down below. I'll post the link to that. But if you have store-bought pesto that you love, go ahead and use that. You're gonna need about eight ounces of it. I like to put a little bit more so it can have more flavor. Go ahead and put that in the pan along along with about a half a cup of either heavy whipping cream or half and half. I'm using half and half and just warm that through, thin out the pesto and then go ahead and add some crushed red pepper flakes for a little kick of heat or some black pepper. Then add your tortellini and just mix that all together with a cup of the reserved pasta water that you have. Go ahead, warm that through and then it is ready to be served. It's so simple, so delicious. Serve this just as is, as a nice veg vegetarian meal or you could serve this with fish or chicken or steak or whatever you have on hand. It is just delicious. Delicious, and it's time for the taste test. This even tastes good cold the next day, straight out of the refrigerator. Mm. The basil makes this so fragrant. The cheese that's in the pesto and in the pasta, it makes it so nice and creamy. It's such a delicious, hearty meal. You guys are definitely gonna love this one. Now we're gonna move on and we're gonna make the Mediterranean chicken orzo, and this comes together in like 30 minutes. Now it's time for the Mediterranean chicken orzo. I have two chicken breasts, boneless, skinless chicken breasts here. If you're using chicken thighs, it's just gonna take a little bit uh, more time to cook, but that works too, and actually it's gonna be even yeah. juicier. You can also use chicken cutlets, which basically you would just uh, have these, cut, slice these in half, and they'd be thinner and cook quicker. So I'm gonna season both sides with a little bit of salt and black pepper. And I have my skillet here that's heating over medium-high heat. To it, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of olive oil. And I'm gonna add the chicken breast to the pan and cook them about four minutes on each side or until they're golden all around and they're fully cooked through. They're fully cooked when the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So while the chicken is cooking, I'm gonna finally chop half of this onion. The other half I'm just gonna wrap in plastic and keep in the refrigerator for another recipe. I also have these roasted red peppers straight out of the jar. I just drained them. I'm just gonna chop these up too. If everything is ready, it's gonna be really good because this, mo this recipe moves really quickly. In this little cup, I have four garlic cloves that I've already grated. I have a cup of orzo. This is dry, uncooked orzo pasta that's ready to go. And I also have some olives here. These are just four uh, big olive, green olives. These, I get these from Costco and they're stuffed with, I think jalapenos and garlic. They're so delicious. You can use um, kalamata olives instead or leave them out.
And then later on, I'm gonna add some harissa. This is from a company that I really love using. The harissa is not bitter tasting like some tend to be. It's mild, even though this is, uh, this is the mild, it's still a little bit spicy, but not too spicy. I'm gonna add some, it's basically a roasted red pepper and chili um, sauce that I'm gonna add to this to add so much flavor. Okay, I cooked it four minutes on each side and then I flipped it over once and cooked it two additional minutes. Go ahead and transfer it to a cutting board or a, a tray or a plate or something like that. Then you can go ahead and add the, uh, the onion and cook them for five, six minutes until they're nice and soft and golden. If you need a little bit more oil, go ahead and add it. Maybe a tablespoon or two. It's looking okay so far. You wanna make sure that the pan is deglazed and all those beautiful brown bits. They're just gonna add so much flavor. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more oil. Cover this and let the onions cook for three, four minutes. Okay, once the onions are nice and soft, you can add the garlic and just warm it through. A few seconds is all it needs. Then go ahead and add the orzo. I'll start with half a teaspoon of salt. And if it needs more later on, I'll add more. A little bit of black pepper. A few teaspoons of harissa. The roasted red peppers and olives. And this is three cups of chicken broth, but you can add vegetable broth or even water. And a little bit of Greek oregano. Quarter to half a teaspoon is enough. Bring this mixture to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, reduce the heat to a simmer and let it cook for about eight minutes or until the orzo is al dente. Okay, so after about eight, nine minutes, the orzo still needs a little bit more time to cook, but as it sits in the juices and over the residual heat that the pan has, it's gonna cook a little bit more. You don't wanna overcook it. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some crumbled feta. I love to use sheep's milk feta because it's creamy and just tastes so delicious. Just crumble it in on top and some fresh parsley. And then I went ahead and sliced the chicken. I'm just gonna put it in here so it can warm through for a minute. And I'm just gonna cover the pan and let this warm through for two more minutes and then it's ready to serve. And there you have it. The orzo, the orzo really absorbs most of the sauce that's left in the pan and the chicken is perfectly cooked. It's time for the taste test. Mmm. This is like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. Everything just goes together so beautifully. The roasted red peppers, the olives, the feta cheese lend so much flavor to this dish. The chicken is nice and moist still and juicy. Printable recipes for all of these recipes are on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And if you want more quick and easy recipes for busy weeknights, let me know if you have any ones in mind or um, just let me know if you want some more or not and I'll bring them to you. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.